We are going to talk today about how matter is classified. So matter, the definition is everything that occupies space and has mass. Elements, compounds, and the systems that form them are matter. And the form that matter has determines its physical and its chemical properties and the way it reacts. Remember, when we're talking about chemistry, we want to know how, uh, how matter is and what are its properties because what we want is chemical reactions. And we want chemical reactions because we want new products, right? So we want to make new products that make our life easier. That's why in chemistry, we study matter. Matter can be divided like this, and, and this is a simplistic view. I know that you will have many more ways of dividing it, but this is a simplified form. It can be divided into substances, and those substances can be divided into elements and compounds. Substances is a sample of matter that can be separated by chemical changes, and substances can be divided into elements that it is what we find in the periodic table, and it can be divided into compounds. When elements react and bond together, they make compounds. As an example, we have oxides, we have bases, acids, and we have salts. On the other hand, we have mixtures. It says mixtures contain two or more substances that maintain its chemical identity and can be separated by physical changes. Remember that substances can be separated by chemical changes. In mixtures, we have homogeneous mixtures. It says the composition is the same throughout, or we can have heterogeneous mixtures where the composition varies from one region to another. And we're gonna see some examples so it can be super clear. So let's start with substances. Sometimes they're called the pure substances. It says they can be separated by physical methods and physical methods can be, for example, evaporating. It can be crystallizing. It can be uh, magnetization, etc. So they can be separated by this. They are made up of the same type of matter or particle the composition is fixed and it is defined. So for example, they can be elements or compounds. So let's see this example. Copper is an element that we can find it in the periodic table. It is a metal that has a molecular mass of 63.55 grams per mole. On the other hand, we have water. And this is where we can see that the composition is fixed and defined. It is fixed, the, the formula, it's H2O, and it's always going to be H2O. It's composed of 11% of hydrogen and 89% of oxygen by mass. If we have anything else, for example, H2O2 or HO or anything other, this is not water. Water is a compound that has a fixed and defined composition. So this is the periodic table here. We have all of the elements that we know so far. This is actually a, an older version because I think we have identified all of this uh, so far. But still, the, the most common ones are here, the ones that are over here and over here. So we can see that we have several different elements. Here's copper, here's iron, uh, calcium that we need for our bones, sodium, as in salt, oxygen, super important. We have chlorine, we have the noble gases, neon, in order to have neon lights, etc. right? Here's, uh, where's gold? Uh, here's silver, and gold would be here's gold. So we have a lot of elements. We know a lot of elements, right? We also have compounds. It says it's pure substances made by two or more different elements in a fixed ratio or proportion. 
This is super important. They follow the law of definite proportions, or it's also called the law of constant composition. They can be separated into its components so we can break up ammonia, but only with chemical methods, like electrolysis, for example. They are represented by a formula, and this formula indicates the amount of something that we have. For example, if we take the example of ammonia and the formula is NH3, I can read it by saying I have one nitrogen combined with three hydrogens. So the molecular formula gives me a lot of information. We have two types of compounds, which are ionic compounds. Ionic compounds is uh, a metal and a nonmetal. And covalent co compounds, it's a nonmetal and a nonmetal. Right, so some examples of ionic compounds. We have metallic salts like sodium chloride. This is table salt, we know it. We have metallic oxides like iron oxide. It is like rust, the red thing that we see here. And we have polyatomic salts like sodium carbonate that we see over here. So there are some salts that we use in our everyday lives, right? In the case of covalent compounds, we can have non-metallic salts like carbon tetrachloride, which is right here. It's a solvent. We have acids like hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid. We use it uh, in the lab. Uh, we have bases like sodium hydroxide. So if you see, these are some examples. There are the most common ones that at least we are familiar with their names, even if we don't use them every day so if you see every of them has a molecular formula that describes the element that are forming the compound and how many of them it has for example in sodium carbonate we have two sodiums we have one carbon and we have three oxygens all right so we can have information based on that on the other hand, with mixtures, we said that mixtures can be homogeneous or heterogeneous, right? Homogeneous if everything is the same, so if all the composition is the same, and heterogeneous if we have different compositions throughout the mixture. It says it is composed by two or more pure substances, its composition is undefined, so it can be variable, and it can be separated by physical processes. I told you physical processes can be uh, evaporation, magnetization, crystallization, etc. right? Examples of them are orange juice. Not all of the orange juices have the same compositions. Some can have pulp, some can't have pulp, some can be sweeter, some can be more acidic, etc. For milk, we have whole milk, we have low fat, we have non fat, we, ha we can have many different types of milks. And steel, you can see it's a solid mixture. So, depending on the steel, on the grade of the steel, is the composition that it will have, right? Okay, so the type of mixtures is homogeneous. It says uniform composition. Homo means equal. It can be liquid, gaseous, or solid. Coffee is an excellent example of uh, homogeneous mixtures. We usually do not see the differences in our coffee, in our regular cup of coffee. For heterogeneous mixtures, we can have different faces if you see here. You have something solid here. You have something liquid, right? This is heterogeneous because we can actually see the differences in the faces. Hetero means different. For example, some salad dressings, carrot cake that we can identify the different parts, or in this iced coffee that we can actually see the different parts that make up, that make up my coffee. Mixtures can be divided into 
several things. The first one is a solution. A solution is a homogeneous mixture made up of very small particles. These particles do not precipitate, so they do not go down. Remember that precipitate is just going down. For example, rubbing alcohol, it's a mixture of an alcohol, and we cannot see the different parts of that mixture when we use it at home. Air is a mixture. Air is made up of nitrogen, oxygen, and some other parts. The composition of air usually 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% some other gases. But if you see, whenever we're breathing air, we don't see, we're not saying I'm not breathing nitrogen and I'm not breathing oxygen. We just take a deep breath and we get that composition inside. So in this case, air is an excellent example of a solution. We also have colloids. Colloids are heterogeneous mixtures, so we can see the difference between the parts of the mixture. They're middle size, but the particles still do not precipitate, so they will not come down. The particles disperse light, and the, the, most, the, the best example would be smoke or clouds. In this picture, in this picture, we can see here in the clouds, we can see the different particles because we see some particles that are wider than the others, right? That is a colloid. What you see throughout a sun, uh, the sunlight in your window is colloids, but we never see those particles in the floor, right? Because they do not precipitate. The last one would be a suspension. Suspension is also heterogeneous, so that means that we can identify the different compounds. The particles are bigger and they do precipitate. And the best example would be some salad dressings, right? If we leave it on the fridge after we use it, we can see that the different compositions that we have. In this case, we have some oil, here we may have some vinegar and maybe at the bottom we would have some solid particles like some herbs or some spices that go all the way down. That's why when we're using a salad dressing, we have to mix it before we use it. So some examples are orange juice salad dressing. That is what we see in the picture. Also some medicine. Uh, medicine that we put away in the fridge whenever we're taking our dose, we also have to mix it because sometimes the particle will just go to the bottom of the, of the flask. So let's just do a brief summary of what is a mixture. It says it can be separated into their components by physical changes. Its composition may vary continuously if adding more of the components, for example, if we're talking about ice coffee and we put ice in it, it will change if we keep adding ice or if we keep adding sugar or tapioca, tapioca pearls, etc. Its properties are related to those of their components. If we use uh, milk plus chocolate, that's a mixture. So something will taste like chocolate mixed with milk. That is something that not happens in compounds. In compounds, it says its components can be separated by physical changes. Its composition is constant, constant most of the time. For example, water will always be water, will always be H2O. Its properties are not related to the elements that make it up chemically. So for example, if we t think about oxygen and hydrogen and they make up water. So this is a gas, this is a gas, and this is a liquid to start with, right? This can be explosive, this is very oxidizing, and this one, we drink it and it's delicious, right? So I mean, they do not have to do with the properties of the element. It, the, 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 the properties change, it, change once you have uh, the compound. So that's super important. 
Okay, some examples. If we see, uh, we have these options, right? Is it an element? Is it a compound? Is it a mixture? So gold is something that we see in the periodic table. So gold is an element. Water vapor is just water that is in a gas form. So water is a compound. It has a fixed definition. Wood, we can see here, it has different compositions. So it is a mixture of different things. And because we can see those different things, it is a heterogeneous mixture. Acidic acid is CH3COOH. So acidic acid is vinegar. It's the, com the chemical name of vinegar. So this is a compound. It can be mixed up with other things if we have apple cider vinegar or if we have rice vinegar. But if we're talking about the component in the lab, this is it. If we're talking about the component in the lab, it will be a compound. Iron, we find it in the periodic table. So this is an element. Air, I told you it was a solution actually, so this is a mixture. And because we cannot see the difference in the components, it's a homogeneous mixture. And sodium bicarbonate, it's right here. Sodium bicarbonate is an anti-acid. Sodium bicarbonate is a compound because it has a fixed definition of what do you have. So this is uh, today's class about how matter